Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we are going to look at playing audio samples in Allegro 5. So far all of our programs have been purely visual. Uh, we have worked on drawing things on the screen, moving them around, interacting, visual items. Uh, so now it's time to look at the, the other realm, the, the audio realm, where we're dealing with things that we can hear. Uh, Allegro has some uh, pretty neat built-in functions that will help us work with different sounds and sound effects and just ways that we can deal with, with, with audio data. Now there is going to be two, two header files essentially we're going to need to load in. Uh, before we start talking about the, code, or the, the, the audio code, I want to show you what I have here. Uh, basically I just have uh, items for my standard window. Uh, I've just got some, uh, some timers, uh, key events, uh, an empty update here, and an empty draw here, uh, and then I destroy everything. So, some pretty much just some easy shell code. Uh, shouldn't be anything new, just stuff that we've seen before here. And I'm going to use that as a framework to do my audio stuff. So, I want to uh, basically include two header files. Uh, the first is going to be, uh, be Allegro 5 slash Allegro audio. And that initializes all of our, our audio libraries. All right, so the, 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 the sample capabilities that come with Allegro. So we need, we need that header file for those. The second is going to be how Allegro knows how to read certain file types. And what I mean is very much like when we were dealing with fonts and we had to initialize the, or have the font header and the TTF header for the true type font, we have the audio header and our codec header which tells uh, our, our software how to read certain file types like our, our .ogg Oxvorbis uh, or WAVE or many many different file types. I don't, I don't, I'm not much of an audio guy so I don't know all the different audio types but um, so that library, or that header, I'm sorry, that header is going to be Allegro 5 hyphen Allegro A codec dot H and that is our audio codec file uh, which contains all that data. Okay, so what we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at playing something called a sample and for us, uh, for all intents and purposes, a sample is pure raw audio data. Um, so it is it's simply audio, right, without any controls built in or really anything like that. It is purely audio uh, and we are just going to be able to play that and stop that and, and basically create it and delete. There's not a whole lot you can do with just pure raw audio without any form of container whatsoever. What you are going to see is that there is a, a, a control structure we can add to our audio which will allow us to, to do a lot more. And we'll look at that in a later video. But the way you can kind of think of it now is uh, we've been using sprites in the last uh, few parts. And, and the sprite is this control structure built around the raw data that is the bitmap, which we show on the screen. Well, for our audio, the sample is that raw data. The sample is that bitmap. And you'll see later we can build a control structure around that to, to get more out of it. So the, the variable type we're going to deal with is this Allegro uh, sample. I'm just going to call it sample. And I'll set it equal to null on here. Now before I forget, I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to call AL destroy sample. And I'll pass the sample. Great. All right. So uh, we have our variable declared. Uh, of course, there's nothing there yet, but we, we're going to work on that. Now after we do our AL init, here we'll do the rest of our initialization for the different add-ons and stuff like that. I need to initialize both the audio and the audio codec add-ons. So I'm going to call AL install audio. And it's very important to call AL install audio before attempting to initialize the audio codec or to reserve sample to load anything, do anything with audio whatsoever. You have to do this before any of that uh, or else it won't work. So after that, I'm going to do L init a codec add-on, just like that. All right, so now my, uh, my software is primed. We are ready to deal with audio. And actually, audio is really, really simple. Basically, you need something called a voice. And a voice is an audio channel, if you will. Like I said, I'm not much of an audio guy. So I might be a little wrong in my definitions here. But, but the, the, the gist is the same. We need uh, a voice, uh, which is a channel. The more voices we have, the more sound we can play simultaneously. All right. So if I have one voice, I can only play one sound at a time. 
I had 10 voices, I could play 10 sounds at a time. Uh, the number of voices is limited by the hardware on the host machine. So my computer, the number of voices might be different than, say, your computer. It all depends. Now, I'm not running any special audio. I'm just using all onboard audio in, on my motherboard. So I don't, I'm not using a sound card or anything. So if you, know, if you have one, you'll obviously have access to better sound than I will. Uh, but, you know, your mileage may vary. So we're just going to go ahead and, and, and play around with this here. So what I'm going to do is I need to... <coughs> I typed the L there. Uh, I need to reserve uh, channels or voices. Okay, uh, and the function is al reserve samples. All right, and I'm going to pass in how many samples or how many voices do I plan on using at the same time. And I'm just going to say one. In this video, we're just going to play a song. All right. If I did more, then I'd be able to, to play more. And this will return back a boolean value to tell me if it was able to successfully reserve as many as I asked for. But I mean, I could do 100 if I really felt like it. I don't know if my system will support 100 or not. I'm just doing one. This has to be called before I can actually play any samples. What this function does is it creates uh, my voices, or my, or my channels, if you will. Uh, in, in this case, it creates one of them. And then it creates a default mixer. And a mixer is uh, basically a, a piece of software or logic that mixes all the simultaneously sounds, simultaneous sounds together and streams them out to your speakers. right? Because your speakers only receive a single channel, right? So something, a mixer, has to take all my various audio parts, add them into one channel, and then send it out. So this both uh, creates my voices, or reserves my voices, and creates that mixer for me. All right. Now I just need to load in my sounds. I'm going to do sample equals al load sample, and I am going to pass in binary solo, which is something I, I have in the folder with my code. Binary solo is a, a portion of the song, I believe it's The Humans Are Dead by The Flight of the Concords. Um, I don't remember the name of the song, but it, the band is The Flight of the Concords, so it's not mine, no, no plagiarism or anything like that. Um, but I just I took a small part of it, it's actually my ringtone. And uh, and I'm just loading that in, it's in the folder, it's a Ox Vorbis file. Um, it's a pretty decent size. Or, or, I mean, it's pretty decent compression, so it's a, it's a small size. Uh, it's comparable to MP3, uh, only you know, Allegro can read it. I don't believe Allegro can read MP3s. Uh, by the way, if you're curious how to get your MP3s to convert to, like, say, Octorbis or whatever, there's a great freeware program called Audacity. You can look that up, uh, and it works really well. Okay, anyway, side note there. I'm going to come over here, basically after I register all my fence sources, and before I run my while loop, and I'm simply going to do AL play sample. And I'm going to pass in, well, what's my sample data? My sample data is going to be sample. Uh, now, this is cool. I can specify my gain, which can uh, effectively be my volume control, right? So for every every bit over one, it's going to get louder and louder and louder. Every bit under one, it's going to get quieter and quieter. One is standard volume. And I can do pan, left speaker, right speaker, or in between. Uh, that's going to be a zero. Uh, it's going to pan between one and negative one. And then I've got the speed. How fast do I want it to play? At one, it's playing at normal speed. Any bigger than one, it's moving faster. Any smaller than one, it's moving slower. And then it finally, my, or not finally, I got one more item here. But this is my play mode. So I'm going to do Allegro play mode loop. It means it's going to play over and over and over again. Not just once, but many, many times. And then finally, this return ID or red ID is simply if I want to create a handle to this playing sample, I can do that. Um, for our intents and purposes, it's going to just be null. All right. Now I will run this, and we will hear music. So there you go. Obviously nothing on the screen, but we can hear the music playing in the background. And it will keep looping uh, over and over and over. And something I like to play around with, if I take this uh, the speed variable here, which is 1, make it like 1.5, See, uh, so yeah, it, it, that's that's fun. I like playing around with that stuff. All right. So that I mean, that's it. That that is the most basic of, of playing sounds. It's actually really really easy. Um, and there's some things we can we can play around with. Uh, for instance, I'm I'm putting this play outside of my while loop, right? 
um, which is all well and good, but what would happen, this is just hypothetical, if I took it out of above my while loop and I put it inside my update. Okay, all right, so I have it inside my update. Now, now listen. You're going to notice that it's still only playing once, right? And you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, this, this play sample is being called every 60th of a second, right? But it's only playing once. So at first that might seem like, why isn't it starting over every 60th of a second? Or why aren't they stacking upon each other? And the reason is because it can only play one sound at a time. Okay? And that's a good thing. That actually works out to our benefit. We only want it to, you know, we don't want it to play over and over and over again right on top of each other every 60th of a second. Um, so that works out. But normally you won't want to call this while it's already running, or else you'll get a stacking effect. For instance, if I set my channels to be four different channels, now listen. A little bit different, right? It's kind of a low body, whatever. Um, because it's playing four times, right? And it's, they're only spaced out by a sixtieth of a second. If I did 20 sound channels, yeah. It's actually a, kind of a neat effect if you think about it, right? Um, so in, in real examples, uh, we would not, uh, we will have a larger number of samples because we we'll want sound effects for games and things like that. So you have to be real careful about how often you call this. You have to make sure it's not, uh, it's, it's not already being played. And with samples, we don't have that capability. That's what I was talking about with that, uh, that control structure. Uh, that, that control structure allowing us to do more with our sounds. And we'll look at that in future videos. So basically, for now, uh, that is the, 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 the very basics of sound uh, audio in Allegro. We have a sample, uh, we create our channels, we load a sample, and we play a sample. And that is it. Now, in the next video, we are going to look at doing sound effects. So stay tuned for that.